Hi everyone and welcome back to Dimitra's Dishes. So today I'm going to teach you how to make Vasilopita. It's been highly requested on this channel and I'm bringing it to you basically what it is. It's kind of like a combination of a tzureki and a brioche. It's a sweet bread that um, traditionally is served on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day and there's a little coin usually hidden inside and whoever gets it in their slice is supposed to have really great I have a really great year ahead of them. So it's fun, it's so delicious. It's a really delicious sweet bread. And basically you can turn it into whatever flavor you like. We're gonna go over the ingredients and then we are gonna get started. So you can use your stand mixer if you want, if you have one, otherwise you can t totally do this by hand. Now, in my mixer right here, I'm creating what's known as a sponge. And if you've used my brioche recipe, you've already done this. Basically what I did was I put some whole milk in here that was warmed up to like room temperature and then I put some yeast, sugar and a little bit of flour and all I did is I let it sit in there for 25 to 30 minutes until the yeast begins to activate and you want to do that just so that way first of all you'll know that your yeast is really alive and going to do its thing and if it's not throw this batch out and start all over but if it is you know you're good to go you want to do that step first and then we have some flour over here this is all purpose it's not bread flour I'm going to just add a little bit of salt to it and then we're going to use machlepi. Machleb is basically, um, a gr and I've ground this up, it's the pit of a cherry. It's so aromatic. There's really nothing else that smells like this. It's very characteristic of a tzureki. You can use this. Another really common flavor, you can use ground um, cardamom seeds or mastic gum. That's lovely too, but I'm just going to use this today with some orange zest. I'm going to put the zest of two oranges in here. You need some butter that's been softened and is at room temperature, unsalted butter always. Some sugar, vanilla extract, and then you can just leave it just like this as it is, or you can add fillings to it, like a panettone type filling with these candied uh, citrus peels and there are some maraschino cherries in here. That's really lovely, especially around this time of year during the holidays. You can use raisins, cranberries, dried cranberries. You can use almonds for the top and sesame seeds. You can also do this in a chocolate version, so you can definitely use some chocolate chips. That, the sky's the limit. Whatever is your favorite flavor, go ahead and put it in here. You know, it's, it's Christmas time, New Year's is around the corner, it's a time where we really celebrate and have our favorite things this time of year. You don't have to worry about it. Just put your favorite flavorings in here and you'll be good to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zest these two oranges. You can also use clementines or lemon. Use these, use these two oranges to make yourself a nice cup of orange juice after this. And then we're going to put about a tablespoon of ground machlepi or machleb and give it a nice stir and I have my eggs in here I'm going to add about a cup of sugar and just combine it, mix it all up and I'll also add my vanilla extract to these wet ingredients right here Perfect. To my mixer, I have my paddle attachment on here. First, we're going to begin with the paddle attachment, and then when we go to add our flour, all this flour, we're going to switch to the hook attachment right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add my egg and sugar mixture, and I'm just going to give it a nice mix until it's all combined. That's it. I'm just going to uh, switch to my hook attachment. And then I'm just going to slowly add all of my dry ingredients, which is my flour and um, my salt and all of that, little by little. And I'm going to let it beat or knead, I should say, in the mixer for about eight minutes until it all comes together and it's going to be a nice, um, really almost like a ball.
Okay, so you want to take whatever butter is left over on these papers and just rub it all over your bowl right here. And then I also have a 10 inch uh, by three inch deep uh, cake pan right here that I've lined with parchment paper. I just cut a circle that fits right in there in the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rub some butter on this as well. That'll make it release easily. Now you wanna take all this dough and put it, transfer it into this bowl. And I love these dough scrapers. I'll put the link down below if you don't have one or if you want to get one. They make transferring sticky dough like this very, very easy. They're also great for um, cleanup. If you want to clean up your work surface, it kind of helps you pick everything up and put it into wherever it needs to go. Everything is nicely incorporated. This is a very rich and delicious dough. So now I'm going to clean my hands up, I'm going to wash them, I'm going to cover this bowl with plastic wrap and I'm going to put it in the warmest place of my house. It's going to take about two hours for it to rise and completely double up in volume and then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so two hours later it should have risen really beautifully just like this, pretty much double in volume. A tip that I share often if you watch my bread uh, making videos. If you want this to rise quickly, like if you're in a hurry or you just want to get it done fast, put a towel in your dryer and let it run for a few minutes until the dryer gets nice and hot. Turn the dryer off and then put this in there, let it sit in there with the dryer off <laughs> and it'll rise much faster. Maybe sometimes depending on the, the season, it'll be ready in an hour, sometimes in an hour and 15 or 20 minutes. It just depends, but that's a really handy dandy tip if you really want to speed things up a bit. Now, at this point, you could just transfer all of this dough into your prepare, prepared um, baking pan, or you, if you wanted to fill it with raisins or chocolate or these candied uh, citrus peels, you just roll, take the dough out onto your, count, onto your workspace, just like so, and then you can put in your raisins, just like that, and your citrus candied citrus if you like it. My husband likes more dried fruit than he does uh, dough, so I'm going to go heavy on this. You can put as much or as little as you like. If you wanted to add some extra flavor while the uh, dough was rising, you could just uh, put some orange juice onto your uh, raisins and they'll get infused in that beautiful orange flavor and they'll be even softer when you put them in your dough like that. And then just roll this up or mix. Just roll it into a circle and put it into your pan. Get all of that in there. Now I have a coin over here that I've wrapped in aluminum foil and I'm just going to put that in there. Try not to put it in like the center. Put it in one little corner so that way somebody can get the slice and then just press it into your pan. Press all the dough around. And then we're just gonna cover this with plastic wrap and let it rise again for another hour or so. You could do the dryer trick if you want with this. And then it'll um, rise and like become really nice and beautiful. In that time, if you wanna preheat your oven to 350 degrees, go ahead and do that. And I'll show you what it looks like when we're there. Okay, so this has risen really nicely. It doesn't have to rise this much to the top of the pan. It can go like three quarters of the way up. That would be fine. And now I'm going to just brush this with some egg wash, which is just an egg yolk with a little bit of water that I'm just mixing up over here. And that's going to give it that beautiful mahogany color once it's done cooking. Now at this point, um, what you can do, what you could have done actually, which I should have pointed out, you could just um, pinch off a little piece of dough like a a, bo uh, a ball of dough maybe the size of like a, a golf ball or something and you can just um, cut four little equal strips out and um, roll out four um, like straw like strips and shape them into like a 2017 some people do that you can do that and put it on top of your bread and then it'll be like you know for the new year 
2017. It'll look nice. I'm just going to keep mine simple like this because I'm going to uh, put lots of powdered sugar once it's ready. I just love the way that looks. Pour the whole thing over. Brush it evenly. And now on top of this, you can sprinkle some sesame seeds or some, uh, some sliced almonds. I'm going to do sliced almonds on this one. I'm so excited. I can't wait till this is ready. But my oven has preheated to 350 degrees. This is going to take about an hour to be completely ready. Um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done, but it's going to be beautiful and mahogany color on top. And it's going to um, sort of begin to release from around the sides of the pan. You can even put a, a toothpick in the center. And if it comes out dry and clean, you'll know that it's ready. But I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And this is what it should look like when it's done. Once it comes out of the oven and it's cooked completely, it should be beautiful mahogany color on top. You want to leave it in your pan so it can cool for at least 45 minutes or so. Just put a, um, uh, release it with a knife all around. Put the knife all around the pan so that way the sides release. And then put it on a really pretty platter. At this point, what I, what I like to do is a generous sprinkling of powdered sugar. I just think that looks really nice and festive. Beautiful. And now we're going to cut into this deliciousness. Look at that. Beautiful. With specks of the citrus, candied citrus in there. I cannot wait to take a bite of this. This is going to be delicious. Let me show you. Now the consistency and the texture of this is different from a tsureki and different from brioche. It's kind of like a cakey bread. It's very cakey and crumbly and wonderful. Let me take a bite of this and it smells so good. Mmm. Get some raisins. This, you guys, is a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Heaven on earth. You have to try this. You have to let me know how it turns out. This recipe, I have to tell you, I had a really tough time back in the day, you know, mastering sweet bread. It was really just, it was a hit or miss, really. But this recipe right here, I made it over and over again guarantee to come out perfect every time. I'm telling you, make this and let me know how it turns out. Comment in, this, in the comment section down below if you made it, what you want to learn how to make next. Share pictures with me on social media. I love to see your recreations of these recipes and I'd love to know what you learned how to make next. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a happy new year and I will see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.